Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays, a confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and today Uri is making some hard candy for a custom order for part of a D&D &D campaign after a dungeon crawl. Now making a custom order isn't strange for us, but usually it's for a wedding, or for corporate advertising, or even an anniversary. But in this case, we're doing it for a D&D &D campaign. The candy has been heated to 310 degrees, and in the pot the flavor and the colors have been added. And Uri pours it on our 150-year-old candy cooling table. While we let the candy cool, let's talk more about this commission. Candy is always fun to make, but you know, it's always more fun when we're turning imagination into reality, and not doing the same thing all the time. Often it's with an image, but in this case it's with a flavor and with a story. And with my childhood in tow, because every time I record the audio for these videos, I'm staring at a bookshelf that contains my first editions of the AD&D manuals that show the wear of years of use, even if the use isn't recent. So here's the story that was passed on to us to get us to make this candy. A group of adventurers are going through the mountains, and they run into a small town called Ever Amber. In the town, they find a small candy shop run by an alchemal candy maker whose name is April. And I want to stop here and say how much I like the idea of a magical candy maker. One of the adventurers asks for a truly unique candy like nothing that's been seen outside of these woods. April thought for a moment she took this as a challenge. The candy maker let her emotions channel the magic and into the cauldron goes flying ingredients circling around her head first. After a few seconds a mushroom cloud of blue smoke comes out of the cauldron. The cauldron's lid goes flying and candies go everywhere clattering around the shop. It wasn't quite the expected outcome, but when the traveler who asked for the candies to be made tried it, he described the candies as being citrus-like with floral notes, but not too sour. The customers left happy, and April the candy maker cleaned up the shop and made a second batch, this time not ending up with half the candy on the floor, and put a sign out with them for sale, calling them April's Moondrop Candies. Fortunately, our candies, while they may be magical, are easier to make. We use this press that was made in 1871, and we use some of our old rollers that we only use for one other type of candy, because we actually have 150-year-old rollers that are crescent-shaped, perfect for this blue moondrop candy. I wish you could try these, but we're not planning on making these for the general public. This was a custom batch, and I love that there's a story behind it, because at a certain level, all candy that we make has a story. This just has one that we were told, and not necessarily one that we're telling. If you're interested in our custom candy, go over to www.pd.net and contact us. Our minimum started about 15 pounds of candy. We do as many customs as we can, but unfortunately there's not enough time to do every custom we could. If you like storytelling, or you like the stories that we tell, we also have a podcast that you can find wherever you download podcasts. It also has the name Lofty Pursuits. If you'd like to try our regular candy, you can also head over to www.pd.net and check it out for yourself. We ship worldwide, and the candy is delicious. The adventurers liked it when they got theirs. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, if you're ever in Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 right by the Thomasville Road exit. We're open seven days a week. We don't make candy all the time, but we make it a lot. So maybe if you're lucky, you can see us make candy in person. And of course, the important thing, the actual gamers loved the candy. Because how often do you get to turn gameplay into reality?